Norwegian-born Andreas Scheldrup is an 18-year-old superstar in the making in Denmark. Already technically insane at the age of 18, the next 10 years of his career should be a wonder to watch. Starting out his career in Bodo Glimt in Norway, he moved in the year 2020 to FC Norseland, and I apologize if I'm butchering that name, but he's in Denmark now. He has been in the last for the last three years, but look at his technicals and mentals. Dribbling of 16, first touch of 16, passing of 16, technique of 16. This kid definitely has an absolutely amazing career ahead of him. Anticipation of 16, off the ball of 16, vision of 16. He had a lot of 16s. Uh, he still has some things to work on. However, he is an absolute monster in the making, and I can't wait to see how he turns out in 10 years. So the year is 2032. It is the end of May right now, the end of the season. He is sitting at Fulham, and he's actually bounced around quite a bit. From FC Norseland, he went to Man United, then to Burnley for 73 games, and then Fulham for 172. So he's been there for the last five years. 16 goals, not too bad. Number composure of 19, off the ball of 17. He has picked things up quite a bit. Corners, it looks like he's gone down one, but he's not really a corner player, apparently. But overall, rated at 34 to 103 million pounds, 115,000 per week until 2035. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens after that season if he continues on. He's an important player. He is 27 years old. But you can see 33 appearances, only a 6'9 average rating, two goals, two assists, this season around FA Cup, two appearances, one goal, 755. So fantastic there. Carabao Cup. He played 10 in the Euro in the UEFA Europa Championship qualifying match for Norway. Let's see, where is he for Norway? There he is. Qualified second to Germany, eight points down, but beating the likes of Czech Republic. That's not too bad. Uh Latvia and San Marino, though. Yeah, San Marino never gets a, a good rollout. But overall, this kid has turned out fantastic. So if we look at his biography, you can actually see he joined Manchester United for 4.9 million, sat in his under in their under 21s for a while, lifting the leasing.com trophy. And then in 25-26, joined Burnley for 27.5 million, made 73 appearances and scored nine goals, then joined Fulham for 43 million in 27-28 currently made 172 league appearances and scored 16 league goals. So he's not a scorer, uh, but I, how many assists? So two assists in 33 appearances, two assists overall. Uh, he hasn't been a goal scorer or an assist man, so that's sad to see. And if we look at his career milestones, he bought by Man United in 4.9, uh, under-21 Premier Division One champions, first international cap against Gibraltar at age 19, uh, bought by Burnley, 27 and a half. Burnley seasonal best 11. Promotion from Skybet Championship, which is good. Uh, that boosted him a little. First international goal against Mexico at age 22. So three years to get his first goal. Norway seasonal 11. Burnley overall best 11. Burnley seasonal 11. Uh, relegated from Premier League, sadly, in 27. Then bought by Fulham for 43 million. Inducted into the Norway overall best 11. That's got to be Holland right up there. So shelter up on the side. So this season he actually has been playing more on the attacking midfield. So he they just someone had trained him a little bit better in the midfield. So that's helpful to see that he's got a little bit more versatility. Uh, but he's only been playing in the AML role. So it's interesting he has very few assists to me. Average rating, but a little too low for me for someone who's got such great stats. It's interesting to see all these greens. And a lot of 15s and 14s still not getting assists. He's only 27. I mean, he's only 27. He's in the prime of his career. He does have some time left, though. So funny enough, though, he has asked to be transfer listed. So he is on the transfer block by request. Apparently, no one but Inter is uh, is interested in him. So I'm going to actually sim a year and see what happens. Maybe I'll sim a couple years and see what happens. But overall, 10 years in, this kid looks pretty fantastic, I have to say. For a lot of the teams that I've seen, you will want to take a look at him, play him as often as you can, get him as much match time as you can. Uh, if you have looked at him, if you have picked him up, I'm sure a lot of people have. He's kind of been the underdog of the Wonder Kids season, uh, but I know a lot of people have had him on, on their lists. Um, so definitely let us know. Have you picked him up? How does he turn out? 
Uh, it definitely would be interesting to know because I'm very I've been interested in this kid for my AC Milan save. However, I didn't put Norway in my list of nations to actually pull into the the starting game, so I think he's pretty much out by now. Uh, but let us know what he's done for you. But let me go a couple years in advance and see what's happened to his career. It is 2035 right now, the middle of June, and somehow Norwich have picked him up. It's interesting considering Inter were the ones that were interested in him. He joined Norwich for 55 million in 2034, 2035. So he didn't even join anyone in 2032. That is very weird to see. 37 appearances, scored seven. So he's actually not doing too bad for them. Fulham, 249 appearances, 31 goals. He picked it up in the last couple of years. I will say that. You can see 36 appearances in the Premier League, seven goals, three assists, still only a 698 average rating though. Uh, UEFA Nations League, 742, doing much better internationally. Carabao Cup, uh, F the FA Cup, bringing it down from that last time we saw him. Not for sale, 160 k per week. It's It's been interesting. Has he career milestones at all? So since then, FA Cup winners in 2033, seasonal best 11, Norwegian best player of the year, third place, championship promoted by Fulham, and they won the FA Cup. Wow, that is a crazy year. Relegated from the Premier League in 2034, bought by Norwich in, uh, for $55 million in 2034, and there he is. So the tail end of his career, as I go to the wrong page, has been interesting. It's definitely not the career I would have anticipated for him. Uh, from Fulham, from Burnley to Fulham to Norwich, uh, from Man United, I, it, the stats to me are very good. Uh, still, you know, he's not a finisher, so that, you know, that's his goals aren't the greatest. Crossing a 14 is not bad, um, so maybe that's why he's not getting the assists. Um, long shots of 13 as a midfield player, maybe there you go. Passing a 14 is still not in the greens, but I think at this point, I would I would love to hear what you have to say and what he's done for your sides. Uh, because it this isn't a bad career at all. He's done very well for himself. He has just not reached the upper echelons that you would expect him to from 18 years old. A slew of greens in his tats. It's it's interesting to see. He does have three winners medals though uh, during his career: the FA Cup for Fulham in 2033, the Leasing.com Trophy for Man United, and the Skybet Championship from Fulham in 2033. So trophy-wise, not a full cabinet. That is for sure. I want to say if he joined Inter or joined somewhere else, he would have probably gotten a little bit better, maybe. So I don't know if joining Manchester United was a bad career move or joining Burnley was a bad career move. Somewhere down there, if he had just made a different change, maybe that could have made the difference. Now, one thing I completely forgot to look at is Andreas Sheldrop's injury history. And then as you can see, I mean, it's a lot of slights, moderate, which isn't great, minors. He has a lot of them though. Pretty much every year he's come down with something. He did have a major one with fractured lower arm uh, it, during a match versus Wolves, out for five weeks, but every the moderates are what's concerning me. Eight days, two weeks, two weeks, three weeks, three weeks, not too far off from a broken arm with five. So overall, I mean, a lot of little tiny issues with a couple of days out, but a couple ones that are three weeks, nine days. So injury proneness seems to be up there a little bit, but I guess that's why we're not seeing a lot of full-time Premier League appearances uh, in his stats. It's a lot of injuries to look at. So as you can see, stats for the entire year. Matches won, 32 out of 53. Player of the match awards, only two. 706 average rating across all of the, the 52 games that he has played. Key passes, 88. Um, best 7-9, worst is 6-2. That's another number that we've seen a couple times. So key tackles, zero, but he has won 98% of them. Um, maybe he's more defensive than he is attacking-minded. I don't know. So minutes on the pitch per assist, 566. Minutes on the pitch per goal, 309. Uh, mistakes leading to goals, zero. So that's good to see, I guess. If we look at his tactics, though, you can see he wasn't used. He was used internationally in the AML role. Nine appearances, three goals, three assists with 740. He was used as a striker for 30 appearances. Seven goals, two assists, 695. And then as a left midfielder for 13, one goal, one assist, 707. Maybe they should have used him as a midfielder more than they did. Uh, but 
as you can see, player traits, if you want to see those. Uh, he, well, he is fairly strong left foot, very strong right foot, so he is very good in both feet. Likes to try to beat the offside trap, plays one twos, does not dive into tackles, cuts inside from left wing. Um, but that is Andreas Shelderup at the age of 31 now. Uh, career, pretty good, but not amazing. And I want to hope that if someone else picks him up with a better team than, you know, the Manchester United under 21s or Burnley or Fulham, you can get a lot more out of him. Maybe I would love to hear what you have to say, but I am Safi FM for the football manager blog channel saying thank you so much. And thank you for watching Andreas Shelter up and his 10 years plus into his career. So thank you as always take care and enjoy.